Mathieu. Hello. I found you. I thought we were doing this on the... Oh, wow, you're outside. You're yeah, I had, uh, I had some uh, issue with, uh, with the informatic side. But it's okay. I'm here. Good. You need a, hair you need a haircut. Yeah, but for the moment, it's, uh, it's closed, so I have to compose. <laughs> How are you? You've had um, a big year. I yeah. had a very big year. Um, sorry, I tried to just set the place for the, the things to, to, to feel well. Um, yeah, I had a very big year, actually. Uh, with uh, the two child. With, Twins. Uh, big vintage. Can we, have, the can, we have the, can we have the twins' names? People like to know. Yeah, it's uh, Matisse and Maxence. Matisse and Maxence. Yeah. Yes, I've met them. Yeah, you had the chance last time. They just went to sleep, so... Hi, Brian. Uh, cool. Cool. Yeah, you have a new uh, house have you to... to fix up. You have... Yeah, I should be, should be good. Are so... you at the house now? I'm a I'm a home, yeah, yeah. I just finished the the work outside, so I'm just home now. Cool. I just, yeah. How's Emmanuel? Emmanuel feel uh, quite well. She's yeah. not too tired. Can she uh, wave? Will she wave or not? What she what? Can she say hello or not? Oh uh, no, she's just uh, with 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 Matisse and Maxence now. So okay, I'll leave her alone. Okay, okay. No, maybe she will come a bit later, I will see. Okay. So, do you want to jump into it? Yeah, we to... can. So, <clears throat> I'd like, excuse me, start with the Vignoble du Rêveur wines, actually. Okay. And I... uh, ask several questions, you know, about how they're, less about the history of how it came about. Short history. Um, but I have a bunch of questions about skin contact, maceration, and things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, first question, are they all sans souffre? Oh, yes. Um, all the maceration are completely uh, without suffer. Um, and, um, and the other ones, they have a very, very tiny amount, so lower than 35 uh, of total, so almost nothing. Uh, I'm looking for a picture, but they didn't load. Okay. So I wanted to put the lineup up, but they are not in my stories. Okay, never mind. Um, okay. Um, they're not all macerated. Some are carbonic. Some are carbonic, yep. Yeah. So do you want to tell us which ones and why you chose that on? Uh, actually, with the with the singulier, um, the singulier is a carbonic maceration. And um, actually, at the beginning, it was uh, was coming from the idea about. Uh, um, actually, I, I had by the past the the first time I tried to vinificate it, uh, one parcel from my uncle. Uh, the result I had with the traditional vinification was not really very interesting, especially it was coming from a parcel where uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, water on the th on, on the on the soil, and so it was always giving kind of uh, acidity, not very interesting for me, and so. Uh, I was I was on the way about uh, about tasting um, testing some maceration, and actually, I thought okay, if I if I would like to test uh, this uh, this uh, uh, maceration, I may can also a test about a carbonic maceration on the same time because this this parcel was giving always kind of acidity, not very interesting, and and the carbonic maceration. I, you know, a lot of people speak about, but most of the people have difficult to understand actually what happened. A carbonic maceration is not a real uh, fermentation. It's actually an enzymatic uh, uh, phenomenon 
where when when you turn the malic acidity to alcohol and so it's a, it's actually a very natural and nice way to uh uh, make it uh, to 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 lower the acidity. The acidity, yes, that's what you and told me once. And time to bring up a little bit the alcohol, so again a, a bit more power. And so at this person, it was a. I was thinking it's a. It's a, it's could be a, a nice way to, to um, to sh to shape and to build the wine. So so on the way of tasting, uh, I would say regular, if I can say that maceration. I was thinking, okay, I can also test uh, some uh, carbonic at the same time. Nice. So the first time that was on vibration, right? Um, the first time it was on the on the singulier, actually at the okay. beginning, on the on the really first time. But I didn't speak a lot about uh, because for me it was really kind of test, and uh, I had uh, it, I, I had a little part that that I have integrated into vibration because actually okay. um, uh, at, at the vineyard du rêveur today we have a, a, a six wines three on on 100 percent macerated and the other will have one part of maceration okay and, uh, this part of maceration is um is uh was was coming also about this test so so that's why it was shared between the two QV. so the first year you made the three fully macerated wines was 16 right uh the 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 three complete the complete line uh was the, yeah 16 16 so almost you've years. made you've made 19 so you have four vintages under your belt with it yeah Has actually it... a bit more because i start with the 13 for the cuvee was named singulier and right. i i had for a few years only the singulier alone so now i think i have a a bit more maybe six seven years of uh, experimentation about maturated wine so are there changes progress um Originally, you had very few amphora. Now you have a bunch of them yep. around the cellar. Um, originally, you had sandstone and earth. Now you seem to have way more earth. Yeah. Um, so with six, seven, eight, nine vintages plus, you know, trials, wh where where are you at now? What do you... Um, I would say that uh, for me, I had uh, the question of the, the amphora is is a share between uh two id or two needs uh during the the, the vinification uh having the the amphora with the clay pure clay uh gives a bit more air during the vinification so it gives them uh it it helps to have less reduction and helps to to polish the the tonic side mm. of the at the other side, the the sandstone uh, lets uh, let came, let came less air, and so makes wines a bit more, um, I would say, rustic or uh, maybe uh, raw. Mm. Um, but they they both have an interest depending uh, uh, the maturity of the fruit, the parcel. So I I use both of them depending the, the the quality of the fruit actually so, depending so, excuse me more on the quality of the fruit or on the variety uh it both actually because when you when you so you know one of the big things, that's what I'm, that's what i'm drinking by the way oh yeah cool and that's one of cool. seven dice wines i have open yeah uh, me oh. i have the i i opened the the Bürlenberg this evening the high density the high density i'm jealous yeah. Yeah, yeah. So next time we we can we can taste it together. Cheers. <laughs> okay, so it, it's a bit so, the variety. So actually, it, it's not a question of um, uh, variety only. Uh, I, I I mean I, I mean the biggest mistake with the maceration is very often people forget uh, the question of the terroir. Uh, and when I say terroir, it, uh, it means uh, they forget the 
the reaction about the the the, the, the fruit because he's coming from one specific places uh, one specific place for example when you're uh, ha having fruits coming from a uh, heavy soil of clay uh, and marls makes very often wines a bit re reductive, a bit protected. We need air to open. Uh, so having yeah, I know. Having, this having, is my this is my third day on yeah on the Rich beer. Summer. It needed it needed three days. It's, it's gorgeous now, but it needed so the heavy marl. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, and need totally. need more need more air. So yeah, typically, it will be the it will be um, it will be vinificated. This type of fruit coming from clay, mars, heavy soil, uh, more reductive side. I will vinificate it on on clay uh, type of uh, uh, amphora. We have a question that you're going to answer quickly. Is everything destemmed on what's macerated? Uh, not necessarily. So, f for for sure, for the carbonic, no, because it's uh, wool bunches and and we keep the fruit and just make the carbonic. Uh, for the other, is destemmed. Yeah, mm. very. Uh, I think for me, one of the key to to keep things clear and precise is to have something with starting to ferment quite quickly. So, so have something uh, distemmed helps to, to start quickly to ferment. So for me, it's, it's one of the key to, 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 to be clear and, and precise. So on the fully macerated wines, um, do you think they express your wine? Uh, oh yeah. Uh, completely. <laughs> actually, I actually, I, I should be honest by saying that at the beginning, uh, my 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 point was that maybe the maceration ha are changing the wines too much, and uh, maybe we will lose uh, the 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 link with the place. And I should say that actually uh, through the year and 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 during all the experimentation I've done, I, I should say that the link with the place starting to be more and more obvious. I think actually at the beginning, a, a lot of people start to, to taste macerated wines like something a bit funny, funky, and uh, take, take the, I would say, the, the, the discovery side uh, as something uh, pleasant. Uh, but the 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 reality is that uh, if you tasted lots of macerated wine, by the time you start, Starting to have enough reference on the taste, on the palate, on the structure, to I would say uh, find your baby, uh, comparing to to what you taste on regular wines uh, with with normal vinification, with no maceration. There's a there's an interesting question here. Yeah. Um, we would never say a red wine maceration highs terroir. Why do we feel that way for whites? <laughs> or do you feel that whole cluster mas? Masks their wine and reds. No, 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 no. I uh, would say no. Actually, I think uh, uh, to be more general, I would say that uh, for me, uh, it's more difficult to have enough experience on the taste, on the palate, to can uh, be to can see what is behind the vinification side. Mm. So when you wait, when you make white wine, and what we do, uh, my father and me at the Domaine Marcel Dice, with all the Cru, Engelgarten, Langenberg, uh, uh, the Grand Cru Altenberg, all of them, uh, the, the point was always to have a vinification who will touch as less as possible mm. 
the origin of the fruit. To, 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 to don't break the link between the original fruit and the taste. So that was the, the beginning point where I, I grew up. Uh, where I grew up. Uh, and I feel that actually when you're starting to have maceration, it's as for the red, uh, maybe the part of the, the technique was in front uh, makes for people a bit more difficult to see behind. But I think that what is behind is uh, 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 still very obvious. It's more a question of training. Uh, uh, if we take the example of carbonic, uh, you can taste a lot of wine today, was made, a red wine, huh, was made uh, with carbonic. And actually, if you taste enough, I think you can be enough strong to can see behind the, the granite, for example, if you take Beaujolais, uh, if, even everything is carbonic uh, or more, more or less, you can see behind the different cru. You can see a Fleury, a Morgon, a Côte de Pie. Uh, uh, it's more a question of training to can see what is behind the effect of the carbonic. So, so uh, the, the point with the maceration in white wine is that uh, uh, when you have a uh, uh, aromatic variety like like we have uh, in Alsace the, the variety can, can be very strong mm. and so it can be difficult for people to see what is behind okay so but let me ask me, you for me, for me for me the link is really here okay well we're gonna get to that because you kind of changed my mind um, last visit we did um, about maceration. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I love an instant sur terre, and it was actually one of the best pairings um, I had with a very a dish I shouldn't have served any of your wines with, which was um, I had to go quick. So it was uh, spaghetti with anchovies, and anchovies is difficult, right? Mm -hmm. um, but actually, and I had Langenberg, Grasberg, and uh, no, I had Zellenberg, Grasberg, and an instant sur terre. And honestly, the best wine was the macerated wine because it's salty and the salt went together. I was really surprised. I thought none of the wines would go with it. But staying on the maceration subject, just one last question. Do you think that a, a wine like An Instant Sur Terre can age, and not, I don't mean just hold and be alive, but transform into something as beautiful and complex as your crews that are made more classically? Um, um, or is it not its purpose at all? No, 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 it's not. The, the point is, uh, honestly, for me, uh, it, it's kind of discovery, and we, we are still discovering things every day with the macerated wine. So, so for me, it, it should be a bit more, uh, a, a bit too much uh, uh, sure of myself by, by saying, just yes uh, uh, but in terms of uh, reflection if I sp if, if I think about uh, all what I've tasted before and uh, my experience I would say this is existing with red wine so I, I would I would not uh, I would expect that uh, that in, in, in macerated wine you can you can have a very nice evolution and have mm. something getting up by the time so why not? Yeah. Actually, for the moment, all the macerated wine, the wine that I've tasted, uh, uh, who have made it, uh, have been made with, uh, with beautiful fruit at the beginning. When they, when they starting to age, for me, they started to be more elegant and more delicate. So, mm. so I think it's, 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 it's actually like a red wine for, for me. So, so, what the funny thing, I, I really loved the last visit with Brian um, yeah. McClintic because we tasted a lot of a lot of cellar trials. Yeah. And originally, the point was to keep um, Le Vigneur du Rêveur, which are the macerated carbonic wines, originally more Van de Soif and Dice with the classic mm -hmm. wines very separate as an yeah. age worthy monument you know, I'm not going to say crusty monuments, but you know what I mean. 
and 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 we tasted a lot of maceration on the cruise, the dice wines, yeah, which may end up partially in blends, and it's absolutely amazing. Like the little blend of Chenonbourg, the ten five whatever percentage of maceration with the normal wine is insane. I think it, I think, I think it's a, it's really one of the key for the future. <clears throat> For me, uh, you know, the, 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 what happened uh, with the time with the with the, the the dice wine is that you know the story starts with my father, and uh, my father wanted to make uh, wine with a uh, body. My, my father wanted to make wine with a lot of body and structure and density and deepness. And and for that, he, he decided to make very long pressing. Uh, I, 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 I don't want to be too... No, I'm going to ask you, I, I wanna ask you questions about that next. Actually, I do. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be too technical also. But the, the idea was to... to, to uh, extru you know... When you have a fruit, we have a okay, real okay. deep maturity. Okay. Just spit, spit it out. Um, <laughs> the dice press cycles are 12 hours minimum. Yeah. Which is extremely long. I mean, yeah. it's a long press cycle. And the point is to go into the skins, fully ripe berries, meaning exactly. potentially with botrytis if the site wants to be. But we'll address that a little later to bring in structure and bitters. Exactly. Actually, just to, 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 to stay simple and to stay clear for everybody, when it's ripe, when the fruit have a real maturity, you can extract the taste. But when, when, it, when you have a fruit that's not completely ripe, you, you, the problem is if you extract, you extract just greenness. Yeah, the mambo. Exactly. And, and so if you extract green side wine starting to be not elegant at all so so you need to have a real maturity to can do that and so if you have the real maturity you can extract by very long pressing so you can make wine with can age long and uh, and so that was the the point the the point at marcel dice and uh, you know when i started to vinificate it also the wine coming from my my mother's side vineyard with the vineyard du Raveur, uh where all the the vineyards are coming from a uh, lighter soil quaternary um, uh, a bit more easy than what we what we have at marcel dice uh, at bergheim i would say uh, i was kind of missing one side of complexity and uh, and for me the the maceration was a way to to reinforce a bit the body and the structure mm. and and um, and so that was kind of a spontaneous uh, uh, thing that I wanted to try just because it, I I wasn't able to explain it so well but uh, it was what was missing on, on my taste mm. and, uh, it, and it really it was really I, fascinating on the Schönenberg because. Yeah, and actually, and actually, uh, the, the point is no that I have this experience with the maceration on, on the vineyard du Rever. I would say that uh, I, I've I'm starting to test a lot of maceration also on the Domaine Marseillaise Cru, uh, yes. and Grand Cru, like uh, the Chenambour, but also like uh, Rotenberg. So it changes, it changes the structure because Chenambour is one of your greatest wines, mm. but it's on a very specific soil, the Kuiper Marl, mm. which has a lot of gypsum, which is sulfur. Yeah. So the so the wine's built to last like three millennia, you know, three centuries, and it takes a long time to come around. And it's it's stunning and it's amazing and it's a very famous wine um, since the Middle Ages because it could keep because what had value back in the old days is what could keep. But it's it takes time. It takes at least time in the glass, but it takes several years. And what the maceration did, it doesn't change the soul of the wine. It does, no. change, the it does change the structure, but it brings a lot of salt and a lot of freshness, actually. I was very surprised. 
it, it brings a lot of freshness. I think we, we just extract uh, one side. Uh, how to say? You know, the pressing, when you, when you just press, whatever you do, you will miss anyway one, one part of the fruit. Mm. And having a little bit of maceration, I think just reinforced this saltiness that you can have. And and for me, I, I it's just I, I I would stay very very honest and very basical on that. But it's just what I've seen when I've tasted. And, um, uh, so it gives yeah it gives a lot of balance actually. So yeah, it was it was pretty compelling. And I know we discussed that you plan to make side by side versions of two or three wines in two thousand and twenty. Yeah. One macerated, one not, or only a little bit. Yeah. Do you still plan to do that in 2020? Uh, in 2020, for sure. And yeah, cool. Yeah, for sure. And and we may have something in 2019. Rottenberg? Uh, no. No, okay. Maybe. Um. <laughs> Okay, so I know we, we we have a we I have I have actually uh, on the way uh, a four five test uh, on macerated, macerated wine that I will uh, normally use m mostly for blend, but I I I I think depending uh, if I like it or not, if I think it's enough uh, elegant and interesting. Uh, to maybe make a, a bottling separated, I will see. Okay, we we have a ton of questions on winemaking, but we're we're halfway there, and I can't have you on and not talk about farming. Um, <laughs> but quickly, what types of press do you use? Uh, we ha we have a uh, every type of yeah. That's the we use. Can. We we use mo mo most of the press. We have one mechanical that I still use every day uh, because uh, uh, when you when you use a mechanical press, you need to do it by hand. I would say turn off, turn on. If you use an automatic uh, things, it's it's just a nightmare and gives nothing good. Mm -hmm. But if you use it uh, manually, it can be very nice. So for me, for example, a mechanical press. It's a very nice way to stay in contact uh, with what happened when you press. I mm. mean, you feel you feel how the fruit is extracting. Uh, but we also have pneumatic press next to that. But I but I, I use the, the pneumatic press. I would say I set my pneumatic press with what I feel with the mechanical press. Yeah. So this is more or less my way to do. Mm. Okay. Um, do you change anything in your macerations according to the vintage? Longer, shorter? Um, not really. Okay. Not really. Uh, um, for me, the vintage is not done at the, at the vinification. The vintage is done outside. Um, so, you know, most of the... Of, I, I don't want to speak for other people, but for me, uh, people who change the vinification depending on the vintage are maybe they are afraid to extract something with not uh, enough mature. And this is my point, but I'm not afraid. I, I try to have something mature every year. So, yeah, I, we don't make a lot of difference. Yeah. So, I'm sorry we can't um, answer all the technical questions on the winemaking, but. Um, Dice family is are some of the most heroic farmers we work with. So I would like to talk about that. Thank you. Thank you. I, it's too much. Uh, no, no, no. It's true <laughs> because in your case, I mean, biodynamics was the baseline in the 90s. We're not even going to talk about that because it's, it's for some people, it's the major achievement. But you was, it was the baseline, but your your father had to fight a lot of um, things with the um, the legislation, you know. There's, I'd, I'd like to talk about a few of them. Um, and um, the first thing, I, you know, no, you know, I, 
Do you know what I want to talk about? <laughs> no, but I, I, just, I, I just I just stopped you one second. But I, just to say, just for me, the 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 center of that, just that here uh, in Alsace, but more generally even in France, uh, the legislation was made more or less uh, at the beginning of the productivity side a moment. And so it, it missing a lot of uh, farming, I would say, real tradition in mm -hmm. one side and a lot of farming logical on the other side. More or less, people just bring what people was used to do the last uh, 10 or 15 years on, on an appellation and they bring make a law to, to, to protect that. But, but they, they, they very often forget it what people does really before and um, it's it's quite it's quite funny because today with the global warming with all the question we have around us uh, about uh, the dry dryness globally and all uh, uh, the question of the question about uh, what to change uh, for the farming uh, starting to be important so And, and starting to be more and more in contradiction with the legis legis legislation. So. so can I guide a little so in a little logical yes. manner? Try, uh, try to, to guide the dice. <laughs> try to set a dice up. That's not easy. Um, <laughs> no, it's not easy. Especially, well, you're, you're calmer than your dad. Um, so you're famous for field blends, and I don't want to get into the whole history about of it. I a lot, but a lot of people are fascinated, and myself included, with how do you actually do it? I mean, physically. First of all, I know you somewhat pick according to sites, early ripening versus late ripening, or is it divine inspiration, or what? What the <laughs> hell's going on there? No, actually, actually, uh, um, it's very funny because uh, a lot, a lot of winemaker, a lot of uh, farmer around, don't understand what we do. But they also, uh, if I take one, one, one uh, hill, uh, uh, one terroir for me, but one hill. Uh, if you look at what people planted, you have different variety. It's especially in Alsace. You also never have one place with mean, one variety. I mean, uh, it's it's always kind of a, a balance between different variety. And people who's farming this different variety don't understand that we just put them together. Okay, I mean, so I mean, if if people have a hill and they have like a like a mainly Riesling, a bit of Pinot Gris, and a bit, a bit of uh, Muscat or, or, or whatever. Why should, and it's working. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, since one, or, uh, one century uh, planted there and, and it gives beautiful wines. Why is it a problem to put this variety all together? Uh, uh, so what we do when we make a, a, a field blend is actually we just, looking around what people do in terms of farming because uh, the origin of field land is not a construction of taste is a question about planted what is adapted to a place um, and so if you have one place with uh, three or four different types of grapes growing uh, one next to the other one plot of this one plot of that why should be a problem to put all of them together And okay. it's exactly what we do for, for the different crew. Okay, so physically, I've got a ton more questions. We've got 24 minutes left. Um, oh. Yes, no, it goes quick. Yeah. I told you, the hour goes quick. We'll probably <laughs> have to do a part two. But so physically, you get your grass back from your nursery, which is a great one. Is, is it Ebanger or is it um, the other one? Uh, um, we, have, uh, uh, we work with uh, Ebanger since uh, long. We also work um, uh, with uh, Berillon. 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 Yeah, Berillon. Yeah. Uh, but we also starting to, uh, since two years now, we're starting to make our own uh, nursery yes. for rootstock. Uh, we, planted, uh, we planted about two hectares of uh, rootstock to can produce ourselves 
for own rootstock. And actually this week, I just uh, uh, graphed myself uh, uh, one part of the Grand Cru Schlossberg uh, that we, we starting to, to graft because we, we planted directly rootstock or own and we starting to graft on the rootstock, yes. on right. the wind yeah. Yeah. on the rootstock. So, um, no, but technically, the, 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 technic, the technical side is not very interesting. No, no, no. I, I have... But for me, for me, the more the more important point is to be a real uh, to come back to be a real farmer means uh, uh, to 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 can do ourselves the complete process because farming is a is a question of in a way system. I uh, never. Uh, um, Sustainable. <laughs> you sustainability. That? Sustainability. Yeah, I never know how. Essay de dire mycorrhiza en anglais. Uh, mycorrhiza, oui, c'est ça. Ouais. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, okay, okay, great. But but for me, this question of autonomy is very important. Well, biodiversity, autonomy. Your father says, why make a wine with a a letter when you can make one with an alphabet, etc., etc., etc. Jumping on, I just wanted people to know you get the grass back. You mix everything up and you plant yep. it ra randomly. Exactly. Exactly. Then some of it takes, some of it doesn't. Um, yeah. Well, today with with the the grape you you have who still existing, most of them they they give fruit almost every year. Yeah. So so, but the the origin of the field blend was, uh, it was at, at the moment where uh, people have. Um, variety really less selected mm. and so uh, uh, they had the trouble and uh, maybe sometimes also a, a, a harder weather especially at the flower and so they they had more difficult to get fruit every year and and for me a field blend is also a question of security to to can be able to make wine every year and have more stability so so yeah yes, this, but the, I, this I, is the I, point. I, know, I know the farmer story so mm -hmm. basically what you're doing is a huge commitment first to biodiversity. You're planting a forest in a way. Yeah, yeah. And um, there are 13 authorized varieties in Alsace. Mm -hmm. But there are 47 other varieties for a total of 60 that are, yeah. that are known. 61, yeah. 61. Yeah. Um, and I know that your father you know, who's a, a, a notorious, um, I can't use that word because, you know, but, um, it, but no, but he's a notorious, he likes to move things in the right direction. Yeah. yeah. But he wants to eventually reintroduce them. And I know that, so do you want to tell us about them or what's happening? I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to say anything that I'm not, not allowed to. You, you mean you mean to say something that I cannot say? <laughs> Or can I say what you cannot say? No, uh, no. Just tell we us a lot. We, we, we have a, we have a very strong interest for this old variety, and right. uh, we we have a strong interest about. <laughs> okay. 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 So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, next question. Um, uh, you have a conservatory of Riesling. Also, yeah, which is very old. Some guy collected them for forty years, and the conservatory almost disappeared. Mm -hmm. Had your father not gone and repossessed it, <laughs> a, a Christmas Eve. But um, because what few people know is that ninety percent of Alsace Riesling is one clone, number forty-nine. Yeah, and so. Be, everything's Masao and a lot of your Riesling's coming from those old selections, right? Yeah, yeah, completely right. Actually, actually, uh, uh, it's always the same. Uh, be, be uh, um, understand things and 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 move the things on one direction very early, comparing to other people, is always difficult because uh, you you will be you will have trouble everywhere. And it's quite yeah. it's quite funny because actually uh, we 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 decided oh my father at this time I was not there huh? at the winery for uh, at this moment but my father he he decided to uh, 
uh, go to cut some some uh, wood and and to use them to graft and to to keep this diversity at a period of time where nobody cares about and nobody wanted to take the risk to do it mm. and, it, and it's, it's actually quite funny because just this year this year uh, like a, a few weeks ago I just received uh, a, a, an email about, uh, I would say, the institution, institution uh, uh, in Alsace, where they, they start to think about doing some selection on the very old parcel and try to refine uh, very old uh, 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 diversity, genetic diversity, and all of that. The same people who removed them 20 years ago, so, so okay, sometimes I think it's important to just um, uh, just trust what we do, uh, have a real trust, and do it like we want to do. And, and, and I think uh, the question of the maturation is exactly the same. Um, a lot of people are still have a lot of difficult to understand maturation. Lots of other just take it like just a, a, a play or a game or a fancy thing. But I think I have a lot of meaning in terms of structure. And, uh, and, and so, yeah, just it's important to, to just uh, trust and try to, to go on the direction where you see something's coming. So you're also planting fruit trees now in the vineyards. Yeah. You started a few years ago with the Young Vines of Altenburg. Yep. Every, every eight rows, one, um, one row of fruit trees. Exactly. And what does that do? Um, gives gives uh, one step more of uh, stability. Because, but, because uh, you know, you know, you know uh, more, more and more people are about speaking about uh, biodiversity. You know, it's it's fancy. It's uh, you know, biodiversity tree, food tree. It's 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 quite funny actually to see people making a monoculture and and behind and around the monoculture putting tree for biodiversity. So it's quite funny. Uh, for us, the, the 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 way was just coming at the opposite. We start the biodiversity by the field land mm -hmm. because the question of terroir and complexity and, and deepness. And, and, and we came by, the, by this uh, taste and, and shape of the wine and interest of the wine to the diversity. And, 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 and planting the tree with the wine was just a, 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 a way to achieve this idea. And but, more diversity also, and you you, you, try, to, you try to you try to push me to say mycorrhiz in in English just before I think I'm not able to do it. Yes. But <laughs> but uh, one very interesting point about tree and wines is that uh, uh, lots of people just forget that uh, wines basically at the beginning uh, they was growing around the tree. And the main mm. things that they wanted they, they wanted to to do is to grow enough fast to can be on the top of the tree taking the sun, and, and I mean, wines and tree are made to live together, mm. and so uh, the, the the last uh, scientist uh, studies uh, uh, this last uh, months or years uh, are uh, actually showing that the mycorrhiz. Uh, the type of mycorrhiz uh, between wines and some type of tree uh, are actually the same and they share it and so it's for me it's really kind of uh, a proof about uh, the symbiosis who was existing really before and I think uh, um, uh, if, you, if you look at what people does two or three hundred years ago I think they was doing a smart uh, biodiversity, and not by by uh, reading books, but just by looking what happened on the vineyard, what I, what happened outside, and see that if you have this type of tree, oh, okay, the wines show well, and uh, oh, you see this parcel, there is maybe another type 
of tree uh, so, uh, en anglais je sais jamais mais les noyers uh, one, walnut trees yeah doesn't work it's they are not made to live together and so they just they just try to keep what was working and and today what 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 we try to do today is just to uh, find this uh, this this uh, this origin and the, uh, to re understood what people just does by observation so when you said it had actually real consequences the lowering of your use of copper uh what we see is that the the the, the parcel where we have the we we have the the trees uh they need less copper actually they are less vigorous they're growing slowly um and uh we, they need less protection globally mm. so but i but i think um uh this this observation uh, will be true with all the fruit and the vegetable that you that 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 are living on the bigger diversity uh, you know if if you look at just a uh, a field with planted with uh, corn or what you want have lots more problem when it's one variety one things with a big parcel that if you have a lot of little plots of little variety of little type yeah. of vegetable so we just try to reduce the system to one parcel so there are a few questions that were asked and since you are drink and there's one right in um front of us um since you actually also make red wine i, I had no idea yeah i didn't know um no seriously you're drinking the berlinberg high density so we have a question on the high density we also have yeah. a que we also have a question about somebody that must know you pretty well because they're asking about the mark rhine yeah and so yeah yeah so, yeah yeah I, uh, so 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 this is uh, this this uh, the wine I, i'm i'm tasting now is actually the burlenberg high density so it's a it's a special cuvee that we're just starting to do uh, uh 2015 this is the first vintage and it's a parcel that we planted in 2008 or 7 i'm not pretty sure i was just joining the winery at this time um and it's a parcel was planted at, actually at uh, 27,000 wines by hectare mm. so really really high density just one two bunches by by wine so very concentrated for the taste and so finally something we can extract just a little and stay very for me was 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 the the, the best we can do at, at the at the Burlenberg. So uh, it's a bottle I'm I'm pretty proud about, and um, and just another question uh, you you just asked me is the question of the Mark Rhine. So the Mark Rhine is a is a terroir uh, was on village of Benvier. So it's a few parcels that I, I replanted about uh, twelve uh, twelve thousand thirteen thousand. Uh, it's, it's the, it's the east, basically, you have Mombourg facing east, uh, south, and then yeah. Marfrain facing east. Exactly. It's and the thing is, the, and, 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 and more than just the exposition, um, it's the question of the... Uh, of the Red soil. The soil was very different. Uh, yeah. Mombourg, Mombourg is a very dry place with a lot of rock. Uh, not a lot of earth, uh, not a lot of clay, uh, exactly. Yeah. Giving, giving something, giving, giving uh, wines where the maturity is coming very early because it's dry, so it's not uh, giving a lot of fruits. So it's it's ripe very early. Uh, a mark kind is kind. Of, it's it's a little different because the east exposition is just the slope is in, in two parts. So it's going down very quickly, and then the slope is break, mm. and so it's going slower. And so this side here is more interesting because uh, uh, for the red, I would I would say, because uh, uh, it means it's heavier soil with more clay, uh, it's more very iron, iron, iron rich clay. Exactly. What's what's under it? 
and, and also and also soil where we all ha always have more uh, humidity. So mm. it's really for me a place for the red because it's never blocked. I mean, the maturity never stopped. Uh, the tannic side will be polished into the end. Um, there is, uh, um, and for me, I, I decided to plant the uh, uh, um, uh, red red at this place because of uh, uh, um, maybe some of the people will know, but uh, a producer who's called Laurent Bart um, mm. who's made some beautiful red wine. And uh, I actually see that him uh, yesterday uh, uh, because I just, we, I just planted the parcel up to him. Uh, so it was nice because we just feel to be two crazy people. On this, uh, on you this are. You, yeah. are, you are a crazy person. You know that. Yeah. But, and, and it's funny because I just, I just planted about a very high density and, uh, and I didn't know he had the parcel just here and, and actually just under you he, he, he have the same with a very high density and and honestly a lot of is um people, is his planted on Ishala as well or more like uh, Lamy? uh on Ishala? no i mean uh, it's uh, it's uh, yours is on Ishala. Uh, i mean it's no 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 it's planted uh, it's it's like uh c'est du cordon uh, enfin pas du cordon de, de du guillot sain enfin du guillot double à plat quoi but the posts are they what's the distance between the posts for for us les piquets oui yours yes uh, or no it's, it's it's i i would say more or less it's looking like a, like a burgundy vineyard so we no. have a, between wines we have a i'm sorry i meant i meant the high density ah on the high density oh, yes. I, I, I i was still on the mark high okay sorry uh, no, on the high density, it, uh, yeah, on the high density, it's uh, just uh, every stick is uh, 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 thirty-five centimeter. Mm -hmm. So, so it's really, really dense. Yeah. I want to talk about something that nobody in the world seems to care about anymore. Grassberg kettles. <laughs> I want to talk about off dry and sweet wine for a second because, um, first of all, in answer to the question I posted yesterday on my Instagram, what wine went best out of the three, dry, macerated, or or off dry, with bimbimbap, which is a Korean dish. Um, apparently, you have it when you break up with someone because it's their feel good dish, but it's very it's pretty spicy, um, and obviously the off dry wine was amazing the dry actually i had a few dry wines the zellenberg because it's pretty spicy was good the mass the macerated wine did not work it's just not enough but there there's some of your your most beautiful wines mm -hmm. my question is are there terroirs that just want to be sweet could they be dry if or would you have to pick them earlier not phenolically ripe, would you have to change your press cycle? I mean, could you make dry Grassberg, dry Altenberg, dry Berg, dry Rothenberg? I think I think the question is not necessarily to, uh, doesn't have to be asked uh, on this way. I mean, actually, uh, some places are uh, very stable on the fact that they have noble road every but, year. Botrytis every year. Exactly. And uh, having botrytis stably every year, for me, means uh, that it's, it's a part of the expression of the place. Uh, so for me, I, I was educated with this idea and I feel it every year on some terroir. For example, if you take the Chenambour, the Schoenbourg have, I mean, when it's when the maturity is here, you have one part of uh, a botrytis. I doesn't mean I, I don't mean uh, you should be have you should have something uh, really sweet all all the time. But I mean the botrytis is part of the place, and this is the the key. Uh, after another question should be how to ferment that mm -hmm. 
because the 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 the, the botrytis uh, have the capacity to uh, give some difficult to the yeast to ferment. Okay. And so and so very often uh, you have wine with botrytis who stopped naturally about a level of eleven. Oh, there you are. On t'a perdu une seconde. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, I just say when you have botrytis, very often what happens is uh, it's 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 stopped to ferment naturally at eleven, twelve, twelve point five degree alcohol, just because the yeast have a lot of difficult uh, because of the lacas. So we don't. I, I would not be too technical also, but I mean botrytis have consequences of the fermentation. Okay. Uh, then, there be... then we can we can also think uh, how what we can do to help to fermentation to go a bit far, and uh, and the maceration is a good part of that. So, um, um, for me, typically you can have places with. It's a graduation between place with never have botrytis, for example, like Mambo. Mambo will be Chauvet, Mambo, will, yeah, yeah, and Chauvet, Mambo, uh, Engelgarten, very, very, very often, uh, Langenberg. Uh, but at the other side, I would say Grasberg, Borg, Schönenbourg, uh, they will always have at least one part of botrytis. So uh, I think for me, it's not very uh, maybe fun fancy, funky uh, or whatever, but it's part of the place. And uh, uh, when you have a real mature fruit, it means you will have the complexity and the deepness. So I just want to show and, this. And, 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 and what, one of the biggest problem with, with the wine with regular, regular sugar today, it's that 99.9% of the wines are uh, uh, just, uh, uh, I'll say that, overripe. Mm. And they just have sugar, but no salinity, no structure, well, that's, no that's, long. So. That's the thing about the dice wines. The ones yeah. that have some RS are sweet on the front, but your farming is so amazing that they're very dry, very mineral, very... But this is... They're demi sec almost more than sweet. And if I can just allow myself, we have on that we have one or two minutes. We are, after many protests from the Dice family, <laughs> adding a dryness scale on the back labels for all the next ones. You should have seen the face of Matteo fast. It was like the emoji with the squinting eyes, with the mad squinting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, oh no, not you. Anyway, we have to, I think, wrap because, it up. Because, because for us, normally it's part of the place. Right. But okay. Okay, Mathieu, I think we have to wrap it up. We have one minute. It's going to cut off. Okay. Uh, what can I say? I love you. I love your whole family. And I should say, uh, happy birthday to my father. Oh, it's his birthday? Yeah. Well, please wish him a happy birthday. We love him yeah. too. I think exactly. I think your idea of having him do one with us is wonderful. <laughs> I think we yeah. should have him on and we should do a second part. It went way too fast. Yeah, we may we may try that. Okay, I'm and better. big kisses to Emmanuel and Marie Hélène and Yeah, and the, the babies. Whole, and the babies <laughs> and the twins and and the, and the dog and your little sister. And, 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 and hello to <laughs> hello to Becky uh Okay, will do. All the family also. Okay, thank you so much, Mathieu. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.